In this video, we're going to look at how we can use the universal beams tables in order to select columns. So first of all, we'll discuss the difference between a column and a beam. And then we'll talk about how we can determine something called the slenderness ratio for a column before selecting an eye section beam or an eye section column for a given application. So first of all, it's important to understand the nature of compression. Now columns are typically components which are vertical and are being subjected to a downward force which causes compression. So on the right hand side, I have a couple of diagrams. We have a short column and we have a relatively long column. Now, if you can imagine, applying a force to the short column is going to place that column in compression. The force is going to be divided by the cross-sectional area of that column. Now, on first inspection, we could say that the same is true for the tall column. Because placing a force on the tall column, we would expect that force to be distributed across the area. The complication comes when the length of the column is significant when compared to its cross section, because then what we get is something called lateral deflection. And all lateral deflection really means is that the column is going to begin to deflect in this direction. And that's when we would observe the phenomenon of buckling, because as we get sideways deflection, the column's going to begin to take on this shape here, and now we no longer just have a situation of direct loading. Now what we have is a situation of bending. We have a force offset at a distance. Therefore, the column is not only in compression, but it's also being subjected to bending. So the way that we determine whether a column is going to be placed under direct loading or bending is using a property called the slenderness ratio. And slenderness ratio is represented by the Greek letter lambda. So we have a formula in the top left hand corner for slenderness ratio, where the slenderness ratio is the length of the beam divided by a new parameter called the radius of gyration. So if we can determine the radius of gyration for a beam and we know the length of the beam, we can determine its slenderness ratio. Now, just to give you an idea, for steel, a lambda value of less than 50 is considered to be a short member or a short column, meaning that we're only concerned with direct loading. For a lambda value above 50, we then need to start considering the effects of lateral deflection, and hence the likelihood of buckling increases. So there's lots of different types of columns. We might have a square column, we might have a rectangular column, or we might have a circular column. And if we know the dimensions of the given column, we can calculate its radius of gyration using the formula in the centre. K equals the square root of I over A. One thing to note is that if we're using that formula and we've got an I section beam as an example, then we need to use the I value that reflects the beam at its weakest. If we was to mount this beam on the XX axis, then it's going to be more resistant to bending than if we mount it on the YY axis. So if we want to determine the beam's likelihood of buckling, then we need to use the second moment of area about the YY axis. The area is going to be unchanged irrespective of the orientation, but we need to determine the likelihood of buckling when the beam's at its weakest. So just to give you a visual representation of this, if we were to place a ruler on a flat surface, on its end like so, and if we were to look at the ruler from the other view, like so, and then apply a buckling force to the top of the ruler, then hopefully you can see that the likelihood of the beam deflecting in this plane is greatly smaller than the likelihood of the ruler deflecting in this plane. This is an example as to why we would need to calculate the slenderness ratio for when the column or the ruler is at its most vulnerable. And in order to do that, we would need to use the smaller value of i, which is typically the value of i on the yy axis. But in this video, we're going to be doing things slightly differently. And what we're going to be doing is using the British standard tables in order to select an eye section beam. Now, the British standard tables give us a value for radius of gyration. And providing we know the length of the required beam, we can then calculate its slenderness ratio.
So let's clear some space and then we'll take a look at some examples. OK, so let's take a look at how our tables can be used. Now for this example, I'm going to specify that I want a slenderness ratio of 40 or less. Now by having a slenderness ratio of 40 or less, we know that the column is only really going to be subjected to direct loading. We don't need to consider the effects of buckling. I'm also going to specify the length of my column as 1.8 metres. So the first thing that we need to do then is calculate the radius of gyration of our desired column. We have the slenderness ratio, we have the length, what we don't know is the radius of gyration. So if we take our original formula, lambda equals L over K, and we need to rearrange that to make K the subject. Now the way that we do that is by multiplying each side by K and then dividing each side by lambda, giving us K equals L divided by lambda. Now we have some values that we can plug in here. We have a value of L of 1.8 meters and a value of lambda, the slenderness ratio of 40, giving us a K value equal to 0 0.045 meters. Now note that the value there is in meters because the length that we used was in meters. Now when we refer to the British Standard Tables, we'll notice that the radius of gyration of those beams are listed in centimetres. So we need to convert 0.045 metres into centimetres. Well, there's 100 centimetres in a metre, so all we need to do is multiply it by 100. Multiplying by 100 gives us 4.5 centimetres. So now we know that for use as a column, we need to select a beam with a radius of gyration of 4.5 centimetres or more. Now the reason it's 4.5 centimetres or more is because we've said that the maximum slenderness ratio that we want to have is 40. Anything higher than 40, and we need to start considering the effects of buckling. Well, if we want our lambda value to be exactly 40, when our length is 1.8, then our radius of gyration needs to be exactly 4.5 centimetres. If we want to ensure that our lambda value never exceeds 40, then we need to make sure our k value never drops below 4.5. And we can see that from our equation over here, because if we increase the value of k, the radius of gyration, that's going to have the impact of decreasing our value of lambda. Therefore, to ensure our lambda value never exceeds 40, we need to select a beam with a radius of gyration of at least 4.5, so 4.5 or more. Let's take a look at the tables and see which beam's appropriate. OK, so on our British Standard tables, we notice that we have two columns for radius of gyration. We have a column for mounting on the XX axis, and we have a column for mounting on the YY axis. Now for the reasons explained earlier, we need to reference the column for mounting on the YY axis, as that's when the beam or the column is most vulnerable. Now as we go down this column, we're looking for a value of radius of gyration of at least 4.5. So 4.5 or more. So we see all of these beams are suitable but are over-engineered. And in fact, all of them on the first page are suitable but are slightly over-engineered. Let's take a look at the second page. And we see that there's two beams that are very closely matched in terms of radius of gyration, one with a value of 4.51 and one with a value of 4.57. Now to avoid over-engineering that column, we're going to select the one with a radius of gyration of 4.51 when mounted on the YY axis. So that's going to be designation 533 by 210 by 92. And note that the mass per kilogram of that beam is 92.1 kilograms. Our beam was 1.8 meters long, so we could calculate the overall mass or the overall weight of that beam using this information. Now let's say as an example, we want to halve the weight of that beam. And we want to look at the impact that has on the slenderness ratio. 
that would mean we were looking for a beam with a mass of around 46 kilograms per meter. Now, as we pan down this column, we notice that there's a beam with an exact mass of 46 kilograms per meter, so half the mass of our earlier beam. The designation is 406 by 140 by 46, and what we're interested in is the radius of gyration of that beam, so we can work out the new slenderness ratio. Well, as we go along that row, we notice that that beam has a radius of gyration of 3.03 .03 when mounted on the YY axis. So we're going to take that radius of gyration and determine the new slenderness ratio. Okay, so we selected our original beam with a slenderness ratio of 40, and we found that it had a mass of just over 92 kilograms for every meter of length. But we then said that we wanted to halve the mass of the column, and in doing so, we selected a new beam for the application with a radius of gyration of 3.03. .03. Note that that's 3.03 .03 centimetres. And what we're going to do is look at the consequence that has on the slenderness ratio. The first thing we need to do is convert that radius of gyration to metres. And the way that we convert centimetres to metres is by dividing by 100. Therefore, the radius of gyration in metres of the new beam is 0 0.0303 metres. So now we can calculate the new slenderness ratio because slenderness ratio is length over radius of gyration. Assuming the length of the beam is unchanged, we have 1.8 divided by the radius of gyration in metres, 0.0303. Giving us a new lambda value of 59.4. Recall that lambda is slenderness ratio, and as it's a ratio, it doesn't have any units. Now, the significance of that result is before the mass reduction, we had a slenderness ratio of 40. When the slenderness ratio is below 50, we only really need to consider direct loading. But when we've halved the mass of the column, we've ended up with a new radius of gyration, and as a result, we've ended up with a slenderness ratio of 59.4. As that value of 59.4 is above the threshold value of lambda of 50, we would also need to consider buckling as well as the effects of direct loading on that column.